Graham, thank you for those uh, kind words. Um, I'd like to preface my remarks by reminding the audience about this lady, Rosalind Pitt Rivers, uh, and really uh, it's encapsulated in that structure there. So in 1952, Rosalind Pitt Rivers uh, discovered T3 or commented that T3 was the active hormone. Um, and I guess I didn't know Rosalind Pitt Rivers personally, but I'd like to draw members of the audience attention to Jamshad Tata, who is at this meeting. Uh, Dr. Tata worked with Pitt Rivers at Mill Hill uh, and has uh, put his memories into biographical comments, uh, much of which make very interesting reading, and uh, I commend that to you. Perhaps the connection between that piece of work and what I'm about to tell you is that actually we and many other researchers who investigate thyroid hormone action uh, owe our existence, our professional existence to Pitt Rivers because if she hadn't invented T3, I guess we wouldn't be trying to understand how it works at a, at a cellular level. Um, I'm grateful to Thea Visser earlier today for having introduced the subject. And what I'd like to do today is to tell you a couple of vignettes, as Graham says, uh, one relating to events uh, here at the membrane a conversion of T4 to T3, and then at the end, I'm going to focus on disorders related to a defective thyroid hormone receptor. Uh, so as, as Teo said, we also recognize that, for example, in the central nervous system, uh, a membrane transporter is critical for the entry of thyroid hormone into cells. And intracellularly, uh, these two deiodinase enzymes, type 1 and type 2, mediate conversion, and then it acts via a nuclear transcription factor, the thyroid receptor. Uh, 